Matt, if uh, you would step up here, we're going to do our national anthem. So everybody, if they please could, please rise and remove your hats as we have our national anthem in front of the world's largest flying flag. Matt, it's all yours. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you very much i hope that wasn't an inconvenience for anybody because we get to live in a country where we get to do things like this. Now, next thing, what I'd like to do, we haven't done this before, but I want all my group to come out here once. Carl, bring your golf cart on around here. I want to introduce you to some of the folks that, uh, just some of the folks that helped us. My name is Russell Boer, along with John Fredrickson right here. Raise your hand, John. Everybody see John Fredrickson. We are the co-chairman of the show. And then we got a big group here that really helps us out. You've probably seen some of them. And I'm gonna get my list out so I don't forget them. That was Carl Van Diepner right there on the golf cart from Cyclone, Indiana. We got J.C. Reitmeyer out here. He does the advertising for us. We got Debbie Jeremiah, she's the food vendor. So when you're eating, you gotta thank Debbie for all the food that's out there. Dave Beerbaum, he does all the tents. If anybody rented a tent or if anybody's taking shade under a tent, thank Dave right there because we got 50 some tents out here. We really appreciate that. Now all the vendors and the tractor clubs, Barry Morey, been out here striping and flagging and doing things. We really got to thank Barry for all the work he does. We've met out here several times. Him and Debbie, they bark out and mark out and uh, we really appreciate all that. Then we got Larry Berry. Let's talk about Larry Berry a minute. He's one of our directors that really help us out. Whatever we need, Larry just does it. Ray Eukins, our treasurer. Raise your hand, Ray. Everybody see what Ray does? <laughs> then we got Derek Harms. He's also on our directors list. So Derek and Dirk, his brother Dirk, and William Wilkin, they do the farming. So the crops that we are harvesting was planted by them people and worked by them people. And we really appreciate all that. That's why we get to do what we're doing right now, Max, because we got, look at the crops we got. And we want to thank Bex Hybrids for putting out some good crops that we can really harvest and have a lot of fun. So give all these folks a big hand right here, right here. This is what it takes. You know, those of you who have clubs at home, you know what uh, is necessary. And many of you serve on county airports back home. And uh, you know the kind of commitment and how few people sometimes show up to get things done. I will tell you that these folks have been pushing and working and devoting their resources and their time, not just for days, not just for weeks, 
many months leading up to this show, they pitch in and make it happen. And you'll go in and you sit in in one of their meetings, and I've done this a few times, and somebody will say, oh yeah, we got to tend to a gate down here. Five hands go up. Or we got to fix this or that. You know, 10 guys volunteer to take care of it. This is really, this is the core of the people who make things happen to make this show. For the rest of us who come along and freeload and have a great time, please join me. Give them a very big round of applause for what they do to show your appreciation. Come on with the United States wherever you come. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, folks. It's just a great, great group to work with. We really appreciate it. And uh, maybe after about Sunday night, my phone won't be quite as hot. So when I call you, you won't, uh, you might not think you have to answer right away. <laughs> oh, my phone's ringing right now, Mac. <laughs> you better take that. It might be your broker or your bookie. <laughs> and not my broker, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, not one of these guys. Like I say, we hadn't done that before, and I thought we need to recognize all the hard work that uh, gets done out here. And uh, we uh, really we need to invoke the name of Darius Harms while we're doing this. The two fellows in the bright shirts, Dirk and Derek, are sons of uh, Darius Harms, who founded this show and gave it such a mighty push, gave it so much inertia and put his heart into it. And so many of you remember him because you met him somewhere along the way or he grabbed your arm and said, we need to have that combine there. We need to have that tractor at the half century of progress. And that's how it all started. In the show that began in 2003 over in Henning, a suburb of Danville. Well, at least in the same county anyway. Okay, uh, are you going to get on the Super H? I'm going to hop on the Super H and I'll come back and join you. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go down this runway and then we're going to make a left turn and go down the east-west runway. So that way they can go east and then they can come back and they can park their tractors where they want to go. We really always highlight this parade. If we could get some of these guys not to come through here where we're doing this parade, that would be super. Okay, one other reason why a lot of people here, on RFD, This Week in Agribusiness, Mr. Max Armstrong, it says farm broadcaster on this sign there. All the way from North Carolina and also up by Batavia, Illinois, that's where the studio is. Max Armstrong, give him a hand, folks, right there. Thank you, Max. And then right here, we talk about this tractor just for a minute. This is Sonny Beck's tractor. Sonny Beck is the founder, one of the founders of Beck's Hybrid, and Beck's is one of our, is the premier sponsor. And uh, without them, we wouldn't have some of the crops we have out there in the field today. And they are right over here. Visit them in the booth in the next couple of days. We really appreciate that. Blair Dunn is driving that tractor. They got it restored a few years ago and it's just really nice. And we got a few more of the Beck tractors. So thank you. Thank you very much, Blair. We got several of the Beck fellows around here and they also have their Becknology days over at Atlanta, Indiana, these same days we do with this. Right here we got Eugene. Stephen Bean from Lewistown, Illinois. Clayton is driving. He is a best employee right there on that real nice restored Massey Ferguson 1130. Then also from Lewistown, Carrie is, uh, Carrie Bear is uh, driving his Oliver 770. He's also from Lewistown, western part of the state. Driving that 770 diesel. Not too many 770 diesel. A lot of 77 gas, right? Landis? Boy, those are smooth. Good diesel and gas, both. Very smooth engine. Six cylinder engine. That Walker Shaw six cylinder. Then we've got an 826. Dean Altman from Anamosa, Iowa. Original paint was 6,235 hours right there. Dean is the second owner of that thing. 826. Then we got Dean Blackford 
from Rankin. 1971, like I say, we're featured class of 71. That's why you want to see it here, 1971. They're Dean Blackford, Rankin, Illinois, one of the I and I directors there. Then we got John Baird from Tuscola. Driver is Jared Baird, driving at 4520 with the repower. We've got a Detroit. Repower in that thing. We're also featuring repower, so we got 1971 stuff and the repower stuff. That is a repower, and there was a reason for a repower in the 4520 because they had trouble with some of the engines in the 4520, and that's why you see a lot of them with 4620 engines or a Detroit or something like that. In then we got Dean Steinman from DeSeris, Ohio. Alex Prouse is driving that 8 in Ford with that flathead V8. Right there, flathead V8 Ford. That is a repower, one of the earlier repowers back. The 8 in with that flathead V8. Make them go fast. I didn't know that they did that to an 8 in. Here's the Zachary family, 1200. Great. Oh, yeah, yeah, pull back on that. I can't help but think of the late Tom Zachary when I see one of their uh, tractors, and they've been great supporters of our shows here. Tom passed away a few years ago, but boy, he really gave uh, Case uh, the spotlight with all of his great collection of equipment. A lot of nice Case stuff. He had it. It's, it was nice. Yeah, in fact, in the recent issue of Heritage Iron, there was a great article on the Zachary Family 1200 in uh, Sherry Schaefer's magazine. Here's the tractor coming up and a trailer from that great museum down at uh, Perryville, Missouri. And I was down there just a few days ago. Scott Bronenkamp here has this tractor, this 340. And this is a fairly common tractor. But what you need to know is when you get to that museum at Perryville, you will see a superb lineup of very unusual tractors. I was just in there. I walked in there. You, you need more than a few hours. To, to see the American Tractor Museum. It's open, I believe, uh, every day, Monday through Friday, and certain Saturdays, maybe. They're limited hours. Go to the website, americantractormuseum.com, and if you're really serious about tractors, you'll say it's time well spent. It's a clean museum, it's neat, it's well documented with signage, and stop down and see those folks in Perryville. Scott, thank you for coming up and bringing that tractor. That's americantractormuseum.com. This looks like one of the Oak Ridge boys right here. He's from Oak Ridge, Missouri, anyway. Stephen F. Shaw had his 1972 4020, the last year they made the 4020, right there. He was also on the tractor drive, Max. We had a good time. We, we dodged the rain on that tractor ride. We were very fortunate. Here comes another repower. This is the, the Miller family, Terre Haute, Indiana, a little bit north of Terre Haute. This is Bla a Blake Miller. It's a 1965 John Deere 4020, and they just finished the restoration of this just before the show. These guys are up uh, Highway 41 north of Terre Haute, up along that Vigo, or do you say Vigo, county line with Park County. Thanks to the Miller boys. Come on, pull back on that throttle. Let's hear it. <laughs> Them Detroit's got a sound of their own, Max. Yeah, they built it in a family machine shop. And then we got another 4520 repower. This is a small farm from Hudson, Illinois, just north of Bloomington. Tim Fulmer driving it. We got the 555 Cummins V8. 555 Cummins V8. They also put that motor in a versatile 700. Nice motor. Then we got another repower. Yeah, it's an 806 from the Fulmer Farms at Pontiac. Dave Fulmer up on the seat there. A V470 V8 Cummins. Done by Fulmer Repower, 1967-806. Boy, that thing's smooth. Uh, Sharp. Then we got the 4020. Oh, Delbert Denver, but he said he's going to bring it. He's up there at the Moyle, Illinois. How about that? I'm glad you got that thing over here, Delbert. Nice, Detroit Diesel, the 4020. Here 
Toyota's 5020 John Deere with 619 Repower. It's a 1970 John Deere. John Miser from Marshall, Missouri. You were just a junior in high school then, weren't you, Russell? 1970? Oh, we graduated that year. Oh, that's right. You're older than I am. Chris Dennis from over at Muhammad. You got Tate Smith driving, that's his grandson. 1977 8630 John Deere with that Tenton Bottom International Valve. You got a good driver there, Chris. We need to shine them bottoms up a little bit more. Well, we need to drop it in out there after yeah, a while. We'll make that baby snow. I, I just wanted to ask you, Russell, if you heard the rumor. You heard the rumor, maybe, that this is the last show ever. I will, keep, I 2000, I will tell you, in 2005, 2007, 2009, 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19, the rumor was out there. You know it's going to be the last Rand Tool show ever. That's what I hear. Yeah, well, if everybody tells you that, say, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. You betcha. You love it so much, and we do too. Oh, this is a white. Did I stick that card in my pocket? Here's a white Ford 225. Keith Renfro from Stewart's in Illinois. That's Keith with this tractor, hand built from two GT 2055 garden tractors. He did this after he retired. That's what you do after you retire. He probably got some of them parts from Tate equipment down there at Stewartson. Then we got this 1026 Hydro Demonstrator Drive Gumnick from Darien, Wisconsin, 3,300 original hours. They call them Gold Demonstrators. 826 and 1026, a lot of them Gold Demonstrators. Some guys got a little surprised when they did a restoration. They went down under that red paint and found there was something else there. That happened a few times ago. There's an Oliver 1655. Bob Shields owns this. The driver is Steve Logston. The hometown, Timewell, Illinois. Home of Timewell Tile. 1974 Oliver. All the same tractor, different yeah. color paint. All made in Charles City, Iowa. Now that one was Oliver. This is a cockpit. This is Bob Shields from Pinewell. Michael Hopkins driving it. And they all look good. All the three colors look good. They really do. That is smooth running walking call right there. Didn't white farm equipment do some things in different colors too after they took over the line? They had these? that American series. Yeah, that's they what had I thought. Four colors. Then they had the silver also. That's there. right. White was owned by Allied Products, I believe it was, headquartered in Chicago there for a while. Later. Yeah. Okay, uh, over this time period, you saw those three variations going the Cockshut, the Oliver, and the Minneapolis Moline. At that point in time, White Motor Company had owned all three companies and they were trying to keep all their customers happy, but nobody was happy. So they stirred all the colors together in the pot and came out with the white silver line. Now you know the rest of the story. This Minneapolis Moline G750, again it's Bob Shields who owns it, Timewell, Illinois. And yes, it was made in the Oliver plant in Charles City, Iowa. 1971 is the year. It's a class of 71 tractor, Russell. You bet. This is Bob Shields and Alex Turr driving that 1950T. T stands for Turbo. They made a 1950 Detroit also. So they had to put the letter T behind the 1950 on that one. Look at this UB. Mini Mo UB. Ernest Wirtz of Hamlin, Ohio owns it. Jim Wirtz from Bloomington, Minnesota is here in the track. You see, doesn't that look mighty pretty? Very gold. 
You're kind of partial to that, aren't you? Yes, I am. I could be aware of a Minneapolis all straw hat that I just bought a while ago. <laughs> then we got this 964 Beachy Farm from Plain City, Ohio. Norman Beachy driving that 960. That was the first row crop that they come out with with Ford in 1955, 56 time period. Here's a case 130, made in 1965, Brian Eubank. Bruce is driving it, it's from Willow Hill. That's Jasper County, isn't it? Down near Burrow Lives, home area. A little bitty tear, let me know. A little bitty tear, let me know on this one too. That's a 1964 Colt. Yeah, this is uh, G, Alice Chalmers G, made in 1949. Brian and Cindy Eubank own it. Cindy is there on the seat. This was used in the Mellon Fields down actually east of the Wabash River, Decker Chapel, down in that area. Those were very popular in the Mellon Fields. They were made in Gadsden, Alabama, all of them, I think, and they used them in the watermelons and cantaloupes. I even drove one for a short time. I help, you know, I used to handle thousands of melons. You know that, don't you, Russell? As, as a young man. That's why you're such a great baseball player. <laughs> don't go there. Oh, no, okay. 1970 International 856 right there. Mark Renner owns this from Owensboro, Kentucky. It comes from Owensville, Indiana. How about that? Owensboro to Owensville. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I knew the guy who owned it, but I don't know who owned it. And he couldn't produce the name for me. Hornsville, Indiana, 47665. Then we got that 6030, Lance Little. That's a 1972 6030. Lance, of course, is uh, from Tuscola. Levi Schrock is driving it, custom built with a power shift transmission. Hmm. Yeah, they put a power shift out of the. Right here. If you want to uh, look at uh, your Minneapolis Moline magazine, right there, that's the chief editor. And uh, any complaints, you got a number for that? <laughs> Call me. Yeah. Cheryl DeLaff, right there. 1968 U302, right there. There's a John Deere 330 standard. Fred and Nancy Searson on this at Kento, Ohio. Nancy is driving it. 1959. Well, there's not a spot on that, is there, Russell? Not a water spot? We're kind of highly sought after. You don't see many 330s. Here's a 435. This also has a Detroit in it. Just a little two cylinder right there. Fred Searson from Camden, Ohio. There's not a spot on that one either, guys. That 435. That was the model that was in a big and rich video. They're coming across the bridge. We're coming to your city. Here is a, uh, that's yours. We got a little gap here. This is in our military service. Did you ever want a surplus something or other? You know, when we were younger, they had all that surplus oh, stuff. Yeah. Didn't you want a surplus? I wanted the surplus helicopters. Worse than anything in the world. Well, those gyrocopters. Here. Here's a G1000 Vista LP gas. Oh, talk about it. Okay. Russell, you love minis uh, yes, so much. Yes, I do. Jeff Longman driving that. 1967 LP G1000 Vista. Then we've got an experimental Roy book from up there, Morrison, Illinois. Big tractor puller. Now he's got this experimental Moline. Now that kind of looks like a R or Z motor. And some little squat little looking thing, 1943. Roy Book. Thank you, Roy. Here's the movie star tractor. <laughs> Jeff Siegfried, who farms down in uh, Randolph County, Illinois, has this tractor. Pause just a minute here for me, Jeff. This is the tractor that was in the movie In the Heat of the Night. Many of you might remember the TV series, but in 1967, there was a very popular movie called In the Heat of the Night. Sidney Portier was in it, Rod Steiger was in it. It was shot in Sparta, Illinois. And there's some great scenes, and if you like International Harvester, there's some great scenes involving the International Harvester dealership. This tractor was there, and it was, was it your grandfather who bought it? 
Jeff's grandfather bought it and the dealer called him and said, uh, can you leave that on the lot just a little longer? The movie company is coming to town. So we're glad you brought it up here for the rest of the story. <laughs> Jeff said, Thank you, Jeff. He's kept that tractor over all these years. Now, I don't know if you know these guys, Mike. Hey! Mike Silverhorn and then you got Paul Wallow on there, too. Well, we got two steering wheels now. Who's driving what? <laughs> two. Dri Mike, are you let? Are yeah, Mike is okay. Two great former employees yeah. of International Harvester Company, and we've, we've been pleased to know them both for a long time. Mike played a role in many ways in this show over the years, and... Uh, Good gun, you know, Paul Wallen, good, good, good gracious. He's just been a great friend, Orion Samuelson's best friend over the years. And I've flown with Paul in an airplane, and he, uh, he was an international harvester dealer. has had two great IH books now. Rick Sayer from Ridgeville, Indiana, on this 1948 John Deere. Wide front end, original wide John Deere wide front end. Got the John Deere vendors cast wheels on that V. Man, he did all gone for that thing. 1953 Super C. And uh, this is Stephen Sausen, who is Dorothy Gertzweiler's husband. Dorothy owns it, right? From Wilmington, Ohio. Same type of tractor that Dorothy's grandfather owned at Perrysburg, Ohio. A tribute to the Super C. Max, look at this rig. No, yeah, no, I, I only got a, three wheels. Uh, 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 Cobbs from Hobbs. Hobbs. Sweet cop, he looks like a sweet cop. I hope your dress don't blow up on you so you can't see. I knew I seen a Lamborghini somewhere, but I didn't think I'd see that one. The brother and sister and the first cousins. They call that cross pollination. Oh, did you hear that? The brother and sister and their first cousins, and it's called cross pollination. I wonder what he's got in the chest there. <laughs> Let's get moving hey, on. Hey, that's a used cob right there, back. <laughs> Hey, let me grab that. I might need that. Yeah, a 1969 John Deere 2520. Tony Sayer, Winchester, Indiana. Tony's driving it. Where did that come from? That was Cobbs from Hobbs, in case anybody missed that Lamborghini. I tell you. <laughs> you never know what's going to come through the freight pack. You never That's know. Right. It could be hiding out there. They could all of a sudden unveil that thing and bring it down the freight. And here we are. Just one surprise after another. There's this John Deere 60 Marvin Pottos from St. Rose, Illinois. Marvin is a survivor. He, yeah, uh, he had a transplant, and we're glad he wants to come back here with the John Deere 60. Thank you, Marvin. He's been a great advocate for transplants and those who help make it possible. Here's a 1949 Farm Hall A, the White Cell family, Tipton, Indiana. This is Larry, and this was his father-in-law's tractor. The late Vernon Cole from Big Rapids, Michigan had that at one time. Thanks for bringing it. Now look down there once though, back the other way. The cop from Hobbs is in the outhouse once again. He must have ate something that really didn't agree with him, I think. You know and what? then he throw these cobs out. I don't know, Max. This, that was probably one of the, one of the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John Deere 60, you Craig and Kathy Smith from West Lebanon, Indiana. Greg driving it. 1952. It is early one. A lot of them early ones had them old with that rear cast wheel. Here's a silver key. Rick Johnston, Mount Carmel, Illinois, owns this. It's in honor of his grandfather, Ed uh, Royal of uh, Milan, Indiana. Silver Kings go pretty fast, don't they? They weren't they made with a Plymouth company or some of them? Yeah, 1946 Silver King. They were in Ohio, made in Ohio, as I recall. Plymouth, Ohio. Huh. They was called Plymouth, and then they but the, there was a, made them change the name. But there was the. Fate. Oh, fate root and heat. Yes, that's right. Yes, you got it. You're huh? on top of it. I don't remember what I had for breakfast, but I remembered fate. Then we got this 
1954 Super MTA Bev and Marvin are from Rebecca from Inwood Island. Marvin has owned this tractor since 1972. We don't have the dates yet. I don't have them in mind for the next show, which would be in two years. But just always remember, it's the weekend ahead of the Farm Progress Show, but the Farm Progress Show is in Illinois. And the Farm Progress Show starts Tuesday at Decatur for three days. It'll be my privilege to be over there. I'll be announcing the field demonstrations there. Whenever the 50 different pieces of equipment are demonstrated, tractors, combines, tillage, tools, grain carts, all of that stuff, I'll be describing it. Here's a farm all age, made in 1947. Dallin Locker from Greenfield, Indiana, a little bit southeast of Indianapolis. That almost looks original. It's in its work clothes. <laughs> The American flag three times over. There you go. We don't say it often enough, but we sure do appreciate those of you here who are veterans and served in the military for our country. We think about you all the time, but especially in times of turmoil like we have now. Thank you for your service. And we mean it. A 1948 John Deere M. Brian Baker, Millstad, Illinois. Boyd is the driver. Which one's Boyd? Aha! Boyd? Boy, you've got that wave down. That works. There you go. With the one bottom plow behind now it. Now we got a 1947 Oliver Cleats track kind of near and dear to Landis Zimmerman's heart right here. It's you want to say something HG. about the Cleat track, Landis? Tell us something about the Cleat track. Oh, uh, yes. The Cleat track was uh, first produced by Cleat track in 1939. Oliver bought it in 44, and he produced it right up to 51 when it was per, uh, replaced with the OC3. Thank you, sir. Here's a Thank beautiful, you, lady. beautiful Oliver. 1973 Oliver 2255. I wonder if that, you think that air conditioner works in there, Russell? You think it's nice and cool and comfortable I think it's there? got a fan. Steve Reeves is it's driving it. Yeah, I don't see it in air conditioner. No, Carthage, Indiana is where that tractor's from. Melvin Winder from Apple Creek, Ohio. Custom seat, and it's a high crop. Not too many high crop Oliver Super 88 right there. That is a dandy. Been on the tractor drive with that one, too. You've been on a high crop much, Russell? Here's a 1960 Oliver 660 Keller Farms at Deerfield, Michigan. And Lynn Keller is driving it. 1060 original hours, 1060 original hours, and those are the original rear tires. I don't believe it's been on too many tractor rides. You know, that tread's getting a little worn on my Super H. 1944, John Deere LA, Ken Kaufman from Carthage over straight west here. You can't miss it if you go down I-72, I-36, or whatever you want to call it when it changes. D-17 LB, Mac, look at that thing. Oh, hi. There's so much to like here. This D-17 made in 1966, a Series 4, and LPG, you betcha, you can see that tank. I just love those LP tanks. They used to kind of scare me uh, back in the day. Look at that uh, side mount more, though. That's a, what is it, an 882SI side mount mower? And all the season, then we got a 1957 John Deere 420 high crop. John Curtis from Mount Vernon, Ohio, pulling a Model 31 12 row sprayer. So well, there was a lot of 24D sprayed with that thing back in the day, I bet. I remember watching my dad mix up the, the spray and he'd have that white powder all over his forearm. He'd stand back. Here's the 1956 John Deere 60, Brian Cubbage, Mount Vernon, Ohio. That's Brian in the seat there. Boy, the two-cylinder guys love that butt-butt, don't they? Oh, yeah. 
all original too, man. Look at that original decal. Got the original dealer sign on the side there. Oh my! Got that three point hitch that you don't see on too many two wheels. Then we got a 1971 John Deere 4320. Jeff and Pam Schaefer from Mount Vernon, Ohio. Jeff is driving it. It's the first John Deere 4320 to pull a Louisville, Kentucky. And that way you got a red written on the front. <laughs> How about that? That was back about 1968, maybe the first year they pulled that Louisville. Was it that early? I would say. 67, 68. There's a tractor owned by a guy we know, John Fredrickson. Co-director here of the show owns this tractor, this 1975-806. Doug Urbeck from Nebraska is driving it. He's the treasurer of the International Harvester Collectors Club. Well represented all over the United States with members from, well, from California to North Carolina. A lot of members spread out across America who are not only into the tractors, but the trucks too, and the appliances. Then we got Jim Fleming from Hartford. They've been thrashing hey. some oats. 1949, Oliver, 88. <laughs> Good to see you, Jim. They have a great tractor ride every year. One of these years, one of these years, I'm going to get there. They had a big tractor drive in this year down to Arthur. Here's, here's a tractor from Arthur also, 1960 Oliver. Fred Helmuth from Arthur. Keith Schrock is driving Fred's 880. Then we've got another Silver King, 1942 Silver King. Gary Oldman from Oregon, Illinois. But look at the helmet. Now, I like that helmet. It matches the silver cage. How fast will those go? What was the top speed? They do about 30? Man, that's all I'd want on a tricycle tractor. Yeah. And more. Single wheel like that. Oh. Dad had one like that, too. Yeah. Oh. You didn't want to go that fast. I wouldn't think so. There was a linkage, wasn't there, with the Silver King and a locomotive company? Oh, that's probably right. Yeah. Probably right. John Deere 4620, Kurt Hagee, from Burlington Junction, Missouri, owns this tractor. A 1971 4620 with power ship. Blake Nagassi is the driver of it. There we go. 1456 is a 1971 class of 71 right here. J.C. Ware from Maryville, Missouri. He's had this tractor since brand new. J.C. Ware, thank you, J.C. Nice, nice tractor. Not too many of them, they're highly sought after too, Mike. Did you ever own an Oldsmobile, Russell? I had a Cutlass, actually, for a while. I inherited a Cutlass from my brother. But this one, this is a 1903 Curve Dash Oldsmobile. Gerald Call of Butler, Indiana is the owner. And look at that, that isn't that nice. A lot of craftsmanship has gone into that. There and care. Another Curve Dash 1903, Skip Ackman from Ashley, Indiana. Skip driving that thing, look at got that pillar rod steering on there. Then you bend that over so his wife to drive it a little bit. You got that uh, umbrella on there keeping it nice and cool, just in case you need a margarita. That's right. Here's a 1950 Minneapolis Moline Z. I see it's nicknamed Old Yeller. And of course, it's from Zealand, Michigan. Josh Westrate. Is the owner of the tractor sitting there on the seat? Really Doesn't that make sense? Well, oh, it's a ZA. It really is. They made a Z and then a ZA and a ZB. This sounds like a repower right here. Probably should have just ran in here and not set in here. International 400 would look like about a 466 in it today. Somebody put some uh, hydraulics on that thing too. How about that thing? Boy, that makes it run nice. I like that starter mounted out there. That makes it nice. That's 
one of the keys to that converter that is putting that starter on there. 400, boy, you talk about a refire. That would be a refire, man. Quite a step. Yes, it would. Then we got 1969 Oliver. 2150 modified four wheel drive, Larry Duda from Mantino, up there in Will County. That's a dandy right there. Take a key, not Will. You're thinking of Yes, it is. That's about on the line, ain't it? Yes, it is. Will and Take a key is right there. I'm sorry about that. Uh -huh. I've been You're thinking Piatone, maybe. It's easy to confuse your Native American town yeah, names. Yeah. Here's an Alice Chalmers 200. Walter Ward has this tractor over in Columbus, Indiana. 1972 200, really, really looks nice. And it was restored in memory of Harold Golan in honor of a great man and a great friend that Harold was. What a wonderful tribute. I think many of us, when we were around these old tractors, were reminded of somebody who was important in our life before. Maybe it was a parent, maybe it's a grandparent, an aunt or uncle. Somebody who's maybe passed away way too young, and uh, it's what a wonderful way to pay tribute to them. Especially if you can get their tractor or restore one like it. This is Jim Ludwig from the Illinois. The Ludwig family farm, 1973, John Deere, 4230, yeah. Not too many 43, 20 games. And of course, we know the town is Lannard. Lannard. Well, Illinois. It depends where you're from. You mean it's, it's, it's Lenark if you're it's not far. Oh. Then we got a regular. This is a regular Wagner. Yeah, WA 17, Donner Farms, Three Oaks, Michigan. Bill or Donner? Billy Donner is up there in the cab. It's a 1966. I don't know if you can hear me, Russell, but that's a 1966 Wagner. There's a guy that knows showmanship. As soon as the announcer is done, you pull back on the throttle. There you go. Later became the John Deere 58 Semi Fleet. There's one here. Yes, there is. Then we got a 1965 John Deere 4020 with a Detroit conversion. Also, Donner Farm for three of the kitchen. Or a driver now. A little lull in the action here. As they come down runway 19, you do know that, you do know that uh, runway 18 it is. 18 going south, 36 going north. Glad to know that I don't have the frequent flyer miles like you do before. <laughs> it's like a greyhound these days. Minneapolis Moline from 1952. Is it a U or is it a UA, UE, UC? It's a U. U-T-U. This is a nice one. Rick and Dale Brunton of Rensselaer own this. I think they've done some pulling with it. Then we got a Model K John Deere Spreader with a Shrimple Buick V8 350. Are you talking about cleaning up the fat floor go back? I could do that. We could throw a few cobs in there. He could spread them out real good. How fast does that go? How fast? It'll go 70. You did say 7-0. You want me to be the first one to try? I'll tell you what, I'll do that at the next show. I'll do it at the show in 2022. Here's a 1941 McCormick Farmall, McCormick Deering Farmall H. This is from Alhambra, Illinois. Stacy Slavka, restored by Stacy's father-in-law. Uh, Frank painted pink against his will. Yeah, I suppose so. And they had the old bull weevil that the Slavka family used to pull around here several years ago. We even helped them with some parts one time after they broke down a picture one night. Back. 44 rear end and then that Chevrolet V8 right there in front of that. It was in the IP. From 76 to 91. 
Oh, yeah, out across that lengthy hood, somewhere under there is a Super M. 1951 Farmall Super M, Tim Hinkey of Staunton, Illinois. The Terminator, it is known as. My, there's a lot of red paint there. 50 I had a special order that hood, and I think that I can't do it. It says 51 Super M. I think that's not quite right in a number of ways, I guess. 1956, Jim Cloney. Dover, Minnesota, 318 Repower, right there. How about that? Here's a 1944H from Stewart's in Illinois. Joe Conger has that. Joe's in command there. Joe was born April 13th, 1944. The farm wall was made August 13th, 1944. It's made four months later. He uses it for tractor drives. And who's this guy? Oh my goodness, there he is. Asymatic, and I'm glad he's kind of showing us respect by pulling his hat off his head. Mr. Dave Dave Gentry from WDWS there, Champagne. Dave. Also from downtown Toronto. Dave has done a great job promoting this show over the years on the radio in Champaign where he helps start the day. He and CW get the day started there for a lot of listeners. They do a great job on the radio. You know this fellow? Yeah, I do. Hi, Freddie. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, 1954 International Farmer Super MTA owned by Al and Freddie Moore of Smyrna, Delaware, and the driver is Freddie. This, this tractor was burned up completely in a 2008 barn fire and was restored in 2009 by Freddie Moore. It worked every day for 40 years on our dairy farm. Thank you, Freddie. All the way from Delaware. I think I saw a picture or two of that. Some of these tractors that have burned before restoration, you know. People have shown me here at the show. Boy, they've really uh, brought them back to life. Now we got this 3020 John Deere, 1965, Drew Hahn from Cox Creek, Kentucky. Tim is driving it, and it also has a number 825 three bottom rollover plow, 3020 diesel. Uh huh. Well, nice restoration on that outfit. Blow for the crossing with that horn. Here's a 1957 Cox Shack. Cox Shack Deluxe 20. Tim Hahn at Cox's Creek, Kentucky owns it. There's Vicky on the seat. They sold a lot of those Cockshot tractors through Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, made in Canada. Flying the stars and stripes of that Canadian made tractor. There we got a 1971 Alice 210, David Appleton. It pulls into five and 12 on our planet. We know that's there's your 210. They're from Freedom, Wisconsin. Yep. This one goes into 5 and 12 mile an hour speed limit class. It's around 600 horsepower. That's why it's spoken like it is. Got that Alice 426 cubic inch motor right there. All right, right now. How do you handle a hungry lamp? How do you handle a hungry land? Yeah. The land yeah. handler. Yeah. What time does the tractor pull start? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Here's an Alice D21, Dave Appleton, Freedom, Wisconsin. Dave is driving it. Pull speed limits up to 10 miles per hour. Engine came from a rock built from scratch. Here's a Farmall Super H Stage 2. That's a souped up Super H from Churubusco, Indiana. Michelle Kleckner is driving it. Keith Boley is the owner. That's a late Super H. Just 
just ahead of the 300, wasn't it, Russell? Yes, there was. Then we got beaten early with Roby, Illinois, beaten driving it. 1950 Oliver 77 diesel. There's a row crop 88, 1950 Oliver. This is the Taylorville FFA raffle tractor. Weston Erlenbush is driving it. They, uh, the Taylorville FFA says, come buy a ticket to support these young people in their tractor projects. They are located at the end of the food row by the entertainment tent. Tickets are cheap, the price is $20. This message brought to you by the Taylorville FFA. Then we got a 1966 12 06 Quint and Bonnie Ann from Judy, Missouri, third owner. It's a farm retired tractor. Nice, nice. 12 06 right there. Well, take a look at this. Somewhere under there it was an F 20. Wow. My, my. All the tool there. Basically a 1939 F 20. Ron Cassidy of Charleston down Coles County owns this. Boy, does that look nice. What a nice job. Got the umbrella on there. All the hydraulics. You got a distributor instead of a mag. Got an oh, alternator. Five hydraulics, you think, but he's got a fender. So. Oh, suit the draw bar. Oh, my goodness. 1963 Alice D19 diesel. From Cape Coral, Florida, Robert Moore is driving it. Boy, that's a dandy. The very first produced tractor with the turbocharger was the D19. Wow. All the way from Florida, thank you. Here's an Indiana tractor. International 656, made in 1969. Dave and Sidney Krieger from Scipio, Indiana, owned this. And it was restored in memory of Dad, John Krieger, from Greensburg, Indiana. Nice restoration, tribute restoration there. Beautiful tractor. Look at that chrome gas cap up there, Russell. Then we got this 1959 730. I drop an LP. Carlos, Louisiana, right there, boy, now that is a dandy right there, all the way from Carlinville, I drove a high crop in a tractor ride in Missouri one year in a storm, and I looked out over the countryside as those lightning bolts were dropping, and I realized quickly the point on my head was the highest point around. I was a nervous boy in that tractor ride. Here's a John Deere 80, made in 1956, Reed and Carter Ingram from Clinton, Indiana. Thank you, Reed. And then we got a 1964 4020, the first year they come out from Clinton, Indiana. Blake Chestnut driving Reed and State Ingram, 4020. Here's a 1938 Graham Bradley 501 from West Liberty, Ohio. And Russell, the, the owner and the driver is Richard Kimball. <laughs> As in the fugitive. The fugitive. Richard he, Kimball. We found him now. <laughs> and he's yeah. a nice guy. Let Real the record show. Guy. Graham Bradley. Emily Ratter from Attic, Indiana. Emily's driving his 1952 John Deere B. All purple and black. Well, that's a dandy. Good job, Emily. You're doing a good job with that hand clutch. It takes a little skill, doesn't yes, it, Russell? Yes, it does. Throttle with the left hand, clutch with the right hand, the steering wheel with your knee. There's a little teamwork. Allison Raiders, John Deere B from Attica, Indiana, 1948 tractor. It's had a little special touch in the restoration, too, hasn't it? She's got to keep up with her sister, I think. We got another Super MJ Bill and Paul Mack from Pine Billy, just across the line. Like to collect tractor from local farmers. Super MJ, that's an Andy right there, Mack. Nice to have that three bottom plow behind it. Yeah. Handle that three bottoms just fine, wouldn't it? 
Yes, it would. This ride. Here's one from the class of 71. You remember that year well. I, I do, Russell. I remember it very well. When I started out my radio career, worked in a studio down in Mount Carmel, Illinois, and had an international harvester air conditioner in the window. This is a John Deere 4020 owned by Don and Carolyn Clark in Beecher City, Illinois. Randy is driving it. it has the m w turbo, oil pan, fan, and shroud. They made a kit to try to keep them cool when you put that turbo on there. Then we got all the way from Armstrong, Illinois, Ed Winkleman driving his 1957 John Deere 720 diesel with that number 30 combine. He is the friend of the train right there. Ed does a great job on posting stuff online. The I and I Club, you can see a lot of stuff there on Facebook. It's a beautiful combine. You can almost see it going through the wheat field. Sitting way up there is Megan Fry, Pocahontas, Illinois, 1972 John Deere 4020 high crop. Boy, those are pretty sought after, aren't they, Russell? Yeah. Especially if they're in good shape. They're hard to find in good shape, though. You own this tractor, Megan? I do that. She shook her head quickly on that. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Armstrong. I own it. Then we got another high crop there. Very great pride from Pocahontas. Down there in Southern Illinois, 1971, 966. You know, Matt and I had a conversation early today, kind of an equal opportunity family here. There's a little bit of red, a lot of red, a little green. This is a, what's that? Large order of fries, he said. Did you get that? I did get that. Ooh, ooh. It's International 400, it was made in 1955. Derry Gomes at Matt's driving it as at night as at IH 39 rollover plow. Kind of fun to watch those work. Wonder if he's working it. You've been oh, plowing with it? Thing to turn over that side to the side. Uh huh. Then we got a guy here that helped us out getting a lot of these retired here, so Mr. Scott Miller from Arcola, driving a 1971 International 1210 pickup LP gas on this one. You never know the LP gas because it's in that toolbox. Ain't that a dandy? Oh my, was that the original color? Well, it looks to me like it's an Alice Chalmers dealer. That is for an international product. How's that work? I was just going to say, I wasn't sure I ever saw one in that color. Well, hey, that, hey, that would look even better in my shed, I'll tell you that. Here's a Minneapolis Moline G706, made in 1963, Cole Stalter. Stalter from over at Petersburg. Cole, thanks for bringing it. Looks like it's still up to the challenge. You can take it right out there and plow with it. presentation of this show, Russell. Coast to coast, border to border. There's a case 930 CK, Dave Boyles from Serena, Illinois. It's a 1966 930. What's that, about a five bottom plow? I got to work with one a little bit. At the end of one summer, help on a neighbor. We got a 
Represented here. This is an American road equipment grader. Did they make those in Indianapolis? Where did they make those? American? Omaha. Okay. And of course, it's powered by a Farmall M. And Robin Geyer of Hudsonville, Illinois, owns it. It was bought new with the village of Myrna, Nebraska. So I guess it went from Omaha to Myrna. Finally wound up in the Hoosier state of Indiana. Man, they used a lot of those on that. You know, maintaining the gravel roads, pushing all of those nails up into the middle of the road after the maintainer went through. <laughs> Flat tire city. 1974, I was 620, Thomas Chatham from Chapman from Farmington, Missouri. Got that sycamore on the back. That'd be pretty handy, too. Well, the Klutsky family is represented here. You don't know how happy that makes us, Randy and Mrs. Klutsky. <laughs> oh my goodness, we, we lost Marion Klutsky a couple of years ago, but what a great collector he was in bringing Alice Chalmers to the fore here. This is a 1959 AC, and uh, Randy's driving it, and Mom Julie is there with him. <laughs> it was a $585 Wheatland kit, it was too expensive, only 200 produced, oh my goodness. Oh, it's great to see you guys. We think often. <laughs> I better not repeat that. There we go, further wrong, driving right behind him, carrying WD-45 dual fuel LP or jazz right there. I'll never forget Marion giving me a tour out there west of the Purdue campus over those hills. I thought, how did I go four years at Purdue and not know this was here? I'd have been hanging out out there all the time. Look at this. A Chevy slash Ford. Man, that's mixing blood, isn't it? Dubelberg tractor, log skidder, Bill Owens of Sturgis, Kentucky has it. 1931. That looks like a 216 Chevrolet six cylinder there to me. You know it when you see it, don't you? Yes, you do. Then we got a 460 high crop, 460 LP gas, U4 from Illinois. One of 15 made, I believe it. I think there would be more 560, but on the 8460 LP gas high crop. You think that was delivered? That had to be delivered in Louisiana or Texas, yeah, yeah. down in a high crop country, LP country too. They kind of met the specs in both accounts. Here's another LP, a W400, made in 1956, Hugh Forbes also owns this. Jeff and Hayden Forbes are driving it, one of 43 built. See, from Missouri, that would bring you into Cardinal Games yeah. on KMOX. Harry Carey, Jack Buck, Mike Shannon, KMOX 1120. You got it. Here's a 1946 Farm Old Age, Larry Lauritsen from Ohio, Illinois, Bureau County. It was his dad's tractor. And uh, has him and W Pistons, nine speed transmission. Oh my goodness. He uses it for tractor rides and shows. We've been on a lot of tractor rides together has over 800 road miles on it. 8,000 road miles. 8,000 road miles on that tractor. I wonder how many sets of tires, Larry. Back that. Here's a massive version of Jenny. Yeah, Dave Beckles from Payton, Illinois. 
Pace in Illinois, Adams County, out there toward Quincy, the western part of the state. Here's another mini mode. Dave and Teresa Bunkle own this. Dave is up there driving it. That's an 1150. We gave one of them away in July over the Penfield back, just like that. Just like that? Yeah. Then we got a John Deere B, 1935. John B, Jesse Hurst, the fourth. Miller, Burke, Kentucky, Jesse Bunkle. That is quite the John Deere B right there. Steel on the front, on the back, and rubber on the front. That looks like Purdue black and gold almost. <laughs> There's a 1960 John Deere 630, Mark Chapman of Hersher, Illinois. Travis, John, and Theodore all teaming up there, I believe. Thank you, guys. Wave at your fans. 1947 Farmall B, Tanya Suit from Brownsburg, Indiana. Got that nice B painted on the front grill there, Mac. That's a dandy the way they got that painted. It's up. really decked out. Is that a light on the front or is that a siren? It almost looks like a siren. It's a light. Here's a 1952 Farmall Super 8, Dennis Wirtz of Maysville, Kentucky. Really a nice restoration. Looks pretty. John Deere 520, Brian Blast from Taylorville, Illinois, the Bear Blast driver. Hi, Derek. 520, got this front weights on there, that kind of unusual to find that front weights on that driver. Looks like it's ready for takeoff here on uh, runway 18. 1964 Ford 4000 Grove diesel. Wade Lovelace, Florida. Kyle Doty is the driver. Wade owns it. It is one of two known to exist used in the Groves. Picking them oranges. 1963 Ford 2000 offset. Kyle Doty from Highland. Yeah, well, uh, that's Zach Smith there. That's a sweet potato man from North Carolina. Yeah. He gave me a box of sweet potatoes. Oh, man, I, I enjoyed that through the pandemic. Sweet potatoes. Did you make some sweet potato fries? Oh, sweet potato pie yet to come. 1961 Ford 881D, power steering, selecto speed. From Nashville, Tennessee, Nick Fisher. Thank you, Nick, for bringing it up. That's quite unusual, having a diesel in a selecto speed. Not too many diesels. Here's another diesel from Nashville, Tennessee. Derek Vogel driving that in 1958, 841. Got a four-speed in that one. You can get a four-speed, a five-speed, and a selective speed. But those were both diesels right there. Not too many diesels in that one. Walt Kelly, Brookston, Indiana, has this 1020, made a 1925 electric start. How about that? Look at that. I can see where the electric starter is. That's kind of handy. They sent a bunch of 1020s to Indiana after the big tornado went through in 1925. The Tri-State Tornado moved out of Missouri about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. About three hours later, after pooped out in Indiana. It had gone all that distance and killed nearly 700 people. But IH sent a bunch of those to farmers. Look at this thing, Mike. You talk about China. 1971, class of 71 right here. Oliver, 2155, Ansel Price driving that. All the way from South Carolina, CR Price is driving it. One of 43 like that. Boy, that is a dandy. It's a Minneapolis Moline built from front to back with green paint. It is beautiful. Beautiful restoration. Look at the front of this one, what happened to it, and what he's got now. Look at that. Yeah, I saw that picture. It was in a fire. It was burnt in a shed fire this 1972, 1468, from Tower Hill, Illinois. 
you can only fully appreciate the restoration when you see that photograph on the front. You know, I wonder if he left that gap in the parade on purpose just so he could close that gap right in front of the announcer's stand. Dan Sturr from Shelbyville, Illinois. Driving a 1066 street power. He calls it a 10-8-1068. Got that 9-liter international motor in there, 1972. Thank you, man. There's a case, C.C., Steve Blinker, Malden, Illinois. And Steve's grandfather purchased this tractor new in 1935. And uh, it's been featured on the classic tractor calendar. John Harvey, back in the day, started that calendar, did a nice job with it. Well-produced calendar, beautiful pictures. A lot of guys brag about their tractor having been on the calendar. There we go, 1968 Alice D17 High Crop LP. Idle Ransom, one of seven made from true Iowa. How about that? Uh oh, now we got some customs. Got some customs. This is the Model HR. Chris Preschel from Hamilton, Ohio. It, it's owned by the son of one of the men who started the company, is that right? Wow, how cool. Then we've got Deanna Pressure from Hamilton, Ohio, driving the Model B testing right there. Sometimes, some of them was made in Shelbyville, Indiana. It was, that was that's what that tag says. Yeah. Made in Shelbyville, and how'd you know that? I didn't know that. Well, in grade school, you must have been a real problem because you were always with your nose in the magazines, the farm magazines. I heard, yes. 1938, Graham Bradley. Dave Pettigee from Fort Recovery. How about that, Dave Pettigee? Boy, that's a nice Graham Bradley. Oh, look at this look, thing. Look man. at this monster. 1965 Massey Ferguson in there somewhere. That 165 modified by Sam, right? And uh, from Selma. Is that Selma, Indiana? The sign on the back says, please do not touch. That is quite the rig. Then we got John Baum from Appleton, Wisconsin with his Sears and Roebuck economy. Only 500 were built. He had 19 of them here. He's got that four Model A engine in there. That's a dandy. He's got a great collection of them that he's brought to the uh, I and I show many years. It's always great to see them. Thanks for having them here. Oh, you got a display over there? Yeah. Here, here we go. John Matthew Lash, Finley, Illinois, the 706 Farm All made in 1966. His granddad bought it new. It was restored in 2013, 2014, overhauled again in 2018. It was a Louisiana tractor originally. Yes, here's the Hedrick family from West Lafayette, Indiana. It's an M with a six cylinder. It looks like I have a 560 or something. Yep. So it's got a 263 gas six cylinder motor instead of a four cylinder motor. Oh, here's a Kinsey Repower, a. Uh, 5020, John Deere 5020 from 1966. Chad Herbrand from DeForest, Wisconsin, owns it, scooters driving it. And we got a 1974, John Deere 4430 from Will Sip. Chad Herbrand, Phil S. driving it from DeForest, Wisconsin. That WA 17. Yeah. 1969 tractor made by John Deere. Dustin Wilkie, Waterloo, Wisconsin. One of the Wilkie tractors. It's 
Venture Trainer and Aubrey Wilkie up there. It's one of 28 built. Here's a 1989 White American 60. The Meyer family of Jeffersonville, Ohio owns it. One of six factory yellow built. Matt Eidenfeld is driving it. Uh, these three colors came back in the White American again. The yellow and the red and the green, representing an earlier era. How well did they do? Well, not so great. It was quite kind of toward the end there. Now, this guy here is responsible for a bunch of tractors coming here. Dustin Wilkie from Waterloo, Wisconsin. They got that 806 high crop diesel. How many did you bring, Dustin? 48 49. or 49? They only brought 49 tractors. You know what? No, now, no, how many are they going to I was going to say, there? no, those guys got to take 55 home. Yeah, how many are they going to go home? Hey, we really appreciate all the support you guys give the show and you have for few shows now. Thank you, Dustin. Here's a Ford 4000. Dave Hobbs, Collins, Iowa, owns this. That's a Fabco Mutter conversion. One of four installed on the 4000. Selenia, California. Selenia, Selenia, California. Look at that. 1964 4000. Look at that. The last year, the four cylinder 4000. Then we got a 1959 Oliver 880 with a 414 Oliver plow, white plow. Dane Berry owns that. Glenn Berry driving it. From Ottawa Lake, Michigan. 880. Nice 880 with the three point. John Deere 530, Dan and Sandy Yak from Soresco, Michigan. The plow is a 145, 314, semi-mounted. What a nice combination. 1959, 530. Thank you for bringing it. 1967, 1206 Wheatland. Zach with the big iron auction. He calls me every once in a while and uh, says, uh, this is Zach from Big Iron, how we do it. And this one's gonna sell on the September 1st Big Iron Auction. Thank you, Zach. See the guys over at Big Iron. We bring you a Big Iron Auction update every weekend on This Week in Agribusiness right after Max's Tractor Shed. This one's selling on the uh, September 1st auction, all right. 1967, 1206, Paul Miller is the owner. Bill Benner is driving it. Hometown Thompsonville. Now, right away, Max, this is the car we've been waiting for. Leaping Lena made a report, made a return. Here we go. All the way from Adams County, Golden, Illinois. That's Jay E to drive in that critter once again. And he gets them guys to ride with him. I don't know, he has to pay them a lot, I think, to ride with him. All the way from Golden, Illinois. Leaping Lena right there, folks. That bumper's taking a beating. Oh, there's right? four bottle lays they can take a beating from. I tell you, look at that thing. Thank you, Jay. And the crowd. Oh, you thought the parade was over. No, no, no. The Woodward family from Concord, Michigan. This is Chris Woodward has that 440i made in 1958 factory green and yellow with the number 26 carry-all. Bringing up the end of the parade. That's the unit that cleans up after the horses. Look at that ballet. I tell you, those things, you know, they're 80 years old. Look at the punishment it can take. Oh, he got him again. 
Thank you folks for coming out today. We had a nice parade. Took a little bit, but uh, we got to see a lot of things, and uh, we'll be doing this again tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Max. Have a great afternoon at the show. Don't forget, if somebody asks you, we're planning on seeing you again in 2023.